G'day viewers, my name's Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists do what they do. Well, hi viewers. Well, we are in Canberra for this episode today and we are with a very talented lady who is one of Canberra's leading portrait artists, by the way. Amazingly talented lady, Barbara Vander Linden. Welcome to the show. Thank nice you very, to be here. Thank you very much for coming along. Now, Barbara has an extensive background in um, graphic design. Uh, she's been one of the great teachers of art in Canberra as well. And really a very iconic person when it comes to the Canberra art scene. It's very much involved in a lot of different situations down here. They have a, a an art facility called uh, M16, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that Barbara's been um, very closely associated with it over the years as well. But Barb's portraits are quite iconic. She actually put out a book in 2013 as well about the uh, famous identities of Canberra. Where did your love of art come from originally? I mean, I know that you had a very strong background with your mum and dad. Yes, it's the only thing I was any good at at school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that and basketball. Okay. Um, and my mother had a very, very um, strong interest in art, which was interrupted by the war, and she relived it through me as well. So we went into the art together. Yeah, but you moved out here from Holland when you were 18 months with your with your mum and dad, and your parents, particularly your dad, had a fascinating background. Um, he was uh, basically in the guerrilla warfare in, in Holland against the, the Nazi Germany. It was pretty amazing. The Dutch resistance. Yeah. Yeah. He used to tell us stories about that when we were younger, lots of interesting things. And he saved a lot of Jews and he took coordinates of where the Germans had their planes mm -hmm. and um, relayed them back to England and he would take a car to Germany and then the Jews would replace all the bits on the car, the bumper bars and all the chrome bits with paint, gold painted, painted. Painted gold. They were gold underneath yeah. and they had painted them and, re and shaped them into the parts of the car. That's amazing. And he would drive back out and stop at a tavern, have a drink with the Germans and <laughs> sing songs with them while the car's parked out. <laughs> it's like it's worth a million dollars the car yeah, <laughs> and just drives yeah. off. Well he was only 17 yeah. and his mum was in the Dutch resistance as well. But your parents, it gave you a lot of freedom. I mean your mum really encouraged your art career when she was young and you were one of those, I think like me, a kid at school that was very frustrated with the scholastic position at, at school because you just wanted to be free and go out and do what you wanted to do. I hated being in the classroom. I couldn't stand it, always dreaming out, the, looking out the window and dreaming of being somewhere else. Yeah. After the freedom that we were given, which was unusual for my parents, I guess, they'd had so much happen in the war and everything was so dangerous. Coming to Australia was like a very safe place. Yeah. So they just let us run wild. And uh, not, not, the other kids weren't allowed to do that, yeah. which was a bit of a shame. But I think that that probably helped to encourage your uh, artistic fervour as well. And you ended up going to East Sydney Tech College yeah. in the 60s. And yeah. you were still quite a young woman when you were there. Yeah, I think I was one of the youngest to start at the art school in Canberra. I did two years in Canberra at the first Canberra Art School of Art. Yeah and then got a scholarship and went on to study in Sydney mm -hmm. and we were only 16 going on 17 when we went to live in Potts Point and King's Cross, mm -hmm. me and two other girls. But you also went on to get a uh, Diploma of Education. Um, yeah, so. well, I was invited to teach art at the Canberra School of Art when I came back from Sydney. Yeah. And I went and did the Dip Ed as well afterwards. Uh -huh. Yeah. So there's a number of things, I mean I know that this is, your home is Canberra and it has been for a long time and um, you've really become a great identity as far as the Canberra art scene is concerned and you do know lots of the people that are involved in the art scene in Canberra also so 
it sort of tends to mould your whole career in any sense. Well, it's a wonderful place, Canberra, for making being a big fish in a little pond, mm -hmm. and you can really make anything out of your life and have be able to have access to the organisations. Mm. If you were living in Sydney or Melbourne, you'd be competing with so many people. Mm. And it's so much easier in Canberra to make a difference. I think it still is, but it might be getting harder. It will get harder. Mm. But there's so, many, there's so many iconic buildings here that represent the arts as well. Mm. Uh, in comparison, as you said, you've got a small population with a whole bunch of things surrounding the arts in comparison to the other cities where there's just so many people trying to mm. you know, get ahead in the same situation. Yeah, very yeah. hard. But we're going to, uh, today, we're going to work with Barbara on some of her pieces. I suppose that you could say that you're an abstract expressionist with some of your work. A lot of the stuff that you do is created around your personal experiences. Yeah, I think it's a bit like a writer. You should really do your work uh, according to what you know mm -hmm. and feel strongly about and can draw on rather than do things that you don't know anything about. That's mm. the preface that I work with. The side of the imagination, um, particularly with your work, I mean, it's one thing sitting down and just drawing a picture of a tree or a landscape or whatever, but the fact is that you use your imagination quite extensively to create these scenes that are part of your life. Well, I'm very lucky because I was a teacher and I had to know many different techniques. Mm -hmm. So with my imagination, I can draw on just about any technique and if I haven't done it, I'll, I'll work out how it's been done and, and use it. Mm -hmm. I'm used to doing that, to bending the the material to my will mm -hmm. in the sense that I know so much. It's, it's like being a carpenter, you have skills mm -hmm. and you do the work and then you add your magic yes. to it. So, okay, what we're going to do from here is go through some of the stages that Barbara actually does to create some of her pieces and then talk about her portraiture and the other abstract expressionism as we go along. But it's really fascinating how she puts a lot of this together. So we'll go over to the next spot and we'll have a look at how she does that. Okay, Bob, well you have, uh, as do many great artists, you've got a sketchbook there, but yours is a sketchbook about your imagination. What comes into your head and you just simply sit down and, and you start to draw. Can we have a look inside that as well? Um, there's just a stack of sketches that I just did at any particular time, like if you're on the phone or mm -hmm. just doodling. People do them all the time. But I scan them into the computer and do things to them and mm -hmm. for example this one here this one here a very simple meaningless no meaning to it at all just shape mm -hmm. pattern and uh, scan that into the computer mm -hmm. and printed it out as you see here and you end up with this here it's just a black and white that you that you use, probably is it texter that you use that with? Yeah, yeah. felt pens are felt wonderful, pen. I love felt pens. And then from there... And then from you've, there... You've coloured it in. I've coloured it in, lovely, Which beautiful... looks really cool. Very simple colours, mm. not, nothing complicated, I've got a lovely set of textures. And from there... You actually my do My thought a... process has just went to, oh, I'm going to, I'll cut these out. Yeah. So I cut them out, all of them out. Yep. And I've got, to, and then I um, put them on a piece of paper. Yeah. And just place them on the paper and look at it and think, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. And you turn it around and think about it and think about it. <laughs> and then you've come up with, and I've come up that with, there, you've come up with that right there yeah and then you've extended so it's a woman's face and then the like lips a mask on yeah the face. It's, it's amazing isn't it just using imagination on that behalf we've got another one at the back here which is very similar 
And you've taken, and this is off the one drawing, of course, so it's really come yeah, out quite I've well. I've done many of them. If you look at that, so that's turned into a vase with flowers and a red tablecloth. I love that one. Yeah. I might do a painting of that one. That looks fantastic, it really does. It just makes these lovely shapes. Yeah. I like it, very simple. But the one that we're going to be working on, or the background that we're going to be working on today, is your abstract expressionism. If we come over here, you can actually see the background colours that Barbara's actually used. And this is just sort of a, a mock-up. But if you look at this one here, I really like this. This is a, a actually a diptych or part of it. And this is basically you floating through the air. Now the piece that we're doing today is the bottom section of the other half of this diptych, which is based on you walking the dog in the afternoons with friends and sort of what you do there. So, which as you can see from putting these background colours down, to basically building up the character and the idea over the top. I really love this work. I think it's fascinating. So why don't we go over to the painting and we'll start on the painting and we'll go from now and see what you do. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, Barbara, well, you've made a great start on that and putting all of those iconic colours down. What are you doing now? What are you, what's your process right now? Well, these are my fun paintings mm -hmm. and I have fun with them and I just splash on these colours. And now I'll get my bit of chalk, my lovely piece of chalk, and I will start to bring these shapes out. The chalk's easy because it just washes away. Very instinctive work. You. Yeah, I, I try to capture pretty areas that have been put down subconsciously. Uh, the next step, once I've painted, uh, drawn the chalk, I get my brush and I go around the edge. Just highlighting it. Well, the fact is that you are a very well-known portrait artist in Canberra, apart from what you're demonstrating for us today. And, You've actually painted some very iconic and famous people from the Canberra area. And one of them, which I think is a great piece, is a portrait of Mel Meninga uh, down on the football field. And obviously Mel's a very well-known rugby league player, or was a rugby league player across Australia. And a picture of um, Paul Daly as well. And uh, Paul's a journo that works for the Sydney Morning Herald these days. Fantastic shot as well on Anzac Parade, looking up towards the War Memorial. With his dog. With his, with his dog as well. So. Just some uh, beautiful pieces, really, really well executed paintings as well. And some of the other pieces that you've done with your portraiture work, now you've got such a variety of styles and disciplines to what you do, but you've got a portrait called Nina, which uh, I think is a really dynamic looking picture. You've got the juxtapose of complementaries there, it looks, looks fantastic. And then the girl outside of the border itself. I think that's pretty amazing. It's very similar to the one portrait of the artist as a young woman. That's a self-portrait of you? Yeah, that's actually from a photograph one of the photography students had taken. I was his model Yeah. and the tattoos are reminiscent of the model we had in the life drawing class, the tattooed lady. Yeah. And that was during my art school days in East Sydney. I was going to say, did you, do you actually have a dragon tattooed on your chest? <laughs> yeah, they, people ask me that a lot. <laughs> the I ants. don't really have that, they're fictitious. So you've been a very active lady in the Canberra art community, very, very much so, in, involved in a number of different groups and then teaching, but in 2003 you put together the Marsden Art Group and still going to this day. So tell me, yeah. what was, tell me what was the motivation towards that? Surprise, surprise. Yeah. Um, I just um, got together some artists and we just started off, I think, four or five of us, supporting each other and, and um, giving each other positive feedback on our work. And that's, uh, that's still going to this day, 2018? Yeah. We won the Chief Minister's Inclusion Awards for the work we do with people with disabilities, mm -hmm. artists with disabilities and I personally have been, uh, what would you call it, mentoring a young intellectually disabled girl who's a fabulous artist. She's absolutely fantastic. 
um, and she's gone on to do some beautiful work. But Natalie didn't even talk when I first met her. She was an elective mute and uh, eventually I got her talking. Oh, that's fantastic. And it was through art that you were able to do that? Through art and just spending time with her and getting her confidence. She was lovely. I loved her so much. She's now living down the coast in a group house with other young people and very happy. Oh, good on her. That's fantastic. Yeah. Now you've got another portrait here of a gentleman who we, we both know. It was very much one of the sort of celebrities in Canberra, I suppose you could say, apart from the politicians. And that's Mr. Frank Arnold. And that's just a great portrait. I mean, if ever I've seen a portrait that represents Frank, it's your portrait of him because it's just so, so him in, in many senses. And I've noticed in a lot of your work that you actually put a, like a cobalt or a sky blue down. Th phthalo it's blue. It's phthalo blue, is it okay? Love it. Yeah, and there's a, we've got a sequence of images here of uh, Wendy Aitkins, which turns out to be a fantastic painting as well. And you can actually see how you start with that blue and work your, work your way slowly but surely through the whole process until you end up with the final result. But it's, uh, it's a great uh, compilation of images that comes up with a fantastic image at the end. What about um, the piece right beside you called Snorkel, Snorkel Girl? Is that, uh, it, it's a great looking painting. It's, uh, I'd never sell that one. Is that anybody in particular? That's me. As, is that right? Yeah, as a child. Christmas day, I'm not sure how old, six maybe, oh. and um, got a snorkel, goggles and snorkels for Christmas. And my father, um, I'm underwater watching the movement of the sea floor. Yes. Going backwards and forwards and looking at all the bits and pieces on the ocean floor. And then my dad taps me on the shoulder and says, I want to take a photo of you. <laughs> so that's the point. That's the moment that I had to come up and he took a photo. And I still remember when I look at that painting, the feeling of being underwater with goggles, yeah. seeing that wonderful world under the water and it just going with the waves. Back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. And they obviously gave you a fairly wild pair of swimmers for Christmas yeah. as well. <laughs> they look like bloomers. Aren't they gorgeous? <laughs> yeah, it's very They're flattering. Lovely, shimmering <laughs> and at the top, beautiful. Very flattering. And that again is done in a very graphic sort of style. Yeah. But, uh, but more realistic than this, but yeah. still has that same outline-y type yeah, look about it. Now when you were doing the book on Faces of Canberra in 2013, why did you choose the characters, the people that you actually painted? Was there a great significance to those individuals? They were nominated, many of them, from the community. And it was 30 portraits and it took you three years to do yeah. that. That was a bit of a labour of love, wasn't it? Without <laughs> a doubt. And one of the characters that stands out a great deal in the book is a lady called Stasia, who from what I can gather was called the soup lady in Canberra, obviously looked after a lot of the poor folks if that was the case. Yeah, her son came up with the idea Yeah. and she took it on wholeheartedly and she's still doing it today. She's got a Order of Australia. Yeah. She was nominated Canberrian of the Year and she not only does the soup kitchen, she also brings food to the hospitals. Yes. And to people at their homes. She's amazing. Another amazing man called Alan Jessup, who's worked oh. with the Salvation Army. Obviously he's raised a lot of money as well. He's raised probably about four million wow. with the Salvation Army. He uh -huh. still works out of Canberra Centre. He's still collecting. Um, I donated the painting to him because I thought that's I could I thought he deserved it for all the, the work that he put in himself. That's fantastic. He's a lovely man. He remembers people come up and they say, oh, I remember you from when I was little. <laughs> that's great. Giving you money. That's wonderful, it really is. I think that's the end of the white bit. You probably can't see it in the camera, but there's a lot of texture in your work as well. well there's lots of lovely texture. 
But there is things, other things I'll do as well. Uh -huh. I like to put some shadow in corners. This is what I call the magic. This is sort of like the bling for you, is it? Yeah, finishing the painting off, uh, making the final touches. This brings more life into it. Yes, it does. And what colour are you using there? Is it a Prussian or ultramarine blue? Or? Oh, that's a phthalo. Phthalo, okay, good colour. I love colour. phthalo. That's a good colour. It's, a, it's um, a really alive colour. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to bring up one more thing, and that was the um, it was a cafe that you used to go to called the Front Cafe. You sort of said it was a bit like your muse. You'd go there and paint people, and you actually got a um, a grant to be able to to put this together. Oh, when I left work, I was looking for something to actually hold on to, some something that interested me. And the Front Cafe opened up in Lynham, and it was full of poets, writers, artists of all kinds, musicians. It was such an interesting place. And so I decided to go to one of their events with a sketchbook and sketch. And when I got my sketchbook full and I decided I'd um, have an exhibition and turn them into posters. Yeah, you've got one called Tutti Fruity that you turn into a poster and it was wild and intimate evenings. Wild and intimate evenings at the front, yeah, yeah, it was really good. You've got the painting of Andy who's playing a guitar and then from that style, and this is in the same exhibition, you come up with um, a picture called Blondie and, and Cooper which were uh, completely different styles once again. Andy was from a photograph and the other more, the looser ones are from sketches. Mm -hmm. So therefore the difference in the styles. They look great, they really do. And you've got one here uh, of the f Front Cafe, which is actually the owner, Paul. And uh, surrounded by two very attractive young blondes. Yeah, they were beautiful girls. He's not so bad himself. <laughs> oh, I'm quite sure he was enjoying those He's a those very nights. good looking man. All right, folks, for well, another fantastic day in Canberra with a very talented lady, Barbara van der Linden. Thank you very much. It's Thank been a great day. It's been absolutely wonderful. Thank you so it. much for coming to my studio. Thank you very much and uh, fantastic to see her beautiful work, one of the iconic portrait artists of Canberra. And obviously we did a little bit of a different piece today, but really, really fascinating stuff as well. So if somebody wants to come along and visit you, they will find you at your website at where? Barb Art dot com dot au okay barbart dot com dot au go and have a look at what Barb is doing and also you can come and see us on Facebook and on YouTube and on Pinterest and on Instagram and I don't know how many these days and also in our website at colourinyourlife dot com dot au we've had a fantastic time in Canberra once again Barbara thank you so much for having us here and as we always say remember make sure you put some colour in your life We'll see you next Yay, time, guys. Yay, for colour in your life. <laughs> Bye now. See Bye. ya. Thank you.